Let me get my first guest on the line. He's a man on a mission to make sure we all stay informed during this tough time. He's the anchor of NBC Nightly News and Dateline. And recently he added one more, NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. All right, well, Lester, are you there? I am, hey. Hey, how are you? Where are you sitting? I am, I, I'm doing okay. I mean, I'm, um, I'm trying to abide by the rules and, you know, like I stand on my head if they told me it would flatten the curve. So, you know, other than walking the dog, uh, you know, a couple times a day and making occasional food runs, I'm, I'm at home. But where are you at right now? Is this your home? It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah this is my uh, home in uh, lower Manhattan. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, for fortunately, we, you know, we've done some work and we got in just in time when all this hit. You know, you, ju you just can't complain in times like this because, uh, you know, a lot of folks can't, like us, work at home. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're doing what we got to do. Yeah, no, amen. I, I feel you. And what's funny about your statement is we have been living in temporary housing. And let me know, <laughs> it is not fun. <laughs> yeah. But we, we have a, a bit of an end of the school year show going on right now. What would you have said, um, you know, or, or what would you have been sad about, I guess, to miss at the end of your high school experience? Oh, you know, um, you know, so much happens in that last month. I think um, one of the cool things, I don't know if they do this anymore, but growing up in California, Disneyland used to have grad night, and they would close the park from uh, midnight to 5 a.m., and high school graduates from all over the West would come and, and just have a fun night. And I remember I really looked forward to that, and I, I would hate to miss that because it was, a, it was like a celebration, not only with your classmates, but with, you know, other, you know, 18-year-olds who were heading out into of the world of college. It's like so fun. <laughs> I love Disney. Yeah, it was a blast. All right, well, you're doing a virtual commencement speech this year for Rutgers? Yeah, yeah, Rutgers. Uh, they asked me to be a commencement speaker, and, and you know, like a lot of schools, they're not going to have a traditional commencement, so I'll be doing it in front of a camera. I've th often thought about this because you see a lot of people in the limelight giving commencement speeches, and I'm like, gosh, that's got to be nerve wracking, right? Like, what are you going to say? Yeah, I've done, you know, I've done commencement speeches before. It's always awkward for me because I didn't finish college. So I always have to like do that as my, you know, announcement that, hey, you know, I, I never stood where you guys are right now. But it's a different message this year because they're going out into a job market that's essentially zilch right now in terms of opportunities. I think my message to them is going to be, um, this is your story to tell. You are the generation that is coming out of this thing. Um, you're going to know how it ends because we're, we'll be playing out this through years. And I want them to think about that. Think about, you know, what are we learning right now that, that we can apply? Um, you know, I'm dying to know how this, you know, how this all ends and, and how it changes us, changes the world where we start, start looking at, you know, issues like climate change differently now because now we're seeing that bad things can really be possible. Some of those things that people may have warned us about that we never heard, um, now we're hearing it. And now we get it that um, all these people that toil away in labs and, and academic settings, you know, going over statistics and possibilities, bad stuff can really happen. But dealing, Lester, dealing with the virus is hard enough for grown-ups. Uh, tell me about the newscast you're doing just for kids. Like, how, how's that going? Yeah, we, um, one of our senior producers said, why don't we, you know, this is also scary, why don't we do a show aimed at kids? And, and immediately we're like, yeah, that makes no sense. Because I have to tell you, there were some nights I'd be anchoring the news and I'd be listening to the words coming out of my mouth. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, there are families watching, there are children watching right now. And there's no way to really, you know, tell these stories uh, in a way that we can comfort, you know, their particular needs. So this was a great opportunity. So we don't shy away from the bad news. We acknowledge this is scary, but we try and, you know, put it in some perspective about, you know, ways that people are helping, um, uh, ways that people are inspiring each other, um, questions that kids may have about, you know, can my pet get the disease, um, those sorts of things. And so we allow the kids to send in their video questions and we try and deal with it with our experts and then have some fun moments. But um, it's gone over really well. We're really proud of it. Thank you so much for keeping us all informed for one thing. But is this the hardest thing you've ever had to report on? Because I know you've had you have so many jobs, you've reported on a lot, but is this kind of really hard and devastating? Well, no, I mean, it's certainly the biggest story I've ever co covered. Um, yeah, I've covered a, a lot of horrible stories involving a lot of suffering. Um, you know, the horrible earthquake several years ago in, uh, in uh, Haiti that had a staggering death toll, and I covered, you know, famine in Somalia. So I've seen a lot of suffering, um, but this, this story has so many moving parts. I mean, obviously it's this health calamity, but it's also this huge economic disaster we're watching unfold and you know these are things that both of those prongs are not going to be easy to fix mm -hmm. in a short term and we yes we may get a vaccine we may get better treatments you know on the medical side but 
still there's a lot of people on this planet who, who need those medicines and things. And then the same thing on the, on the economic side. I mean, the damage is mounting every day. Yes, yes, true. Um, was there one particular image or moment when the seriousness of it all really hit you? Because I feel like it's been in different moments for everyone. Yeah, I mean, obviously I deal in moments, but I think, uh, I think it was one day toward the last few days that I was broadcasting from a studio versus my home, I was kind of holed up in my office and I opened the door one day and I couldn't see anybody and it was weird. I'm at 30 Rockefeller Plaza, you know, the nightly news newsroom and we had so quickly moved people to work off site. And it just hit me that one day when I realized there's just not a lot of people around here right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's when, that? this is weird. What was that? Oh, this is Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Oh my gosh, you, what kind of dog? I have a Henry and Henry looks similar. Oh, Lucy is a, a four-year-old Australian Labradoodle. Okay, I have a Golden Doodle. I was gonna yeah, say she barks, she barks with an Australian accent. It's very strange. Um, no, <laughs> no. So aren't they? Aren't they? I mean, I love. I've always loved dogs, but at, love during dogs. this period, do you not find you're hugging your dog more and petting your dog more? My dog is in heaven because I work so much and you do too because I listed off all of your jobs. But like if I'm around him so much now and he can come with me because I'm on the ranch and he kind of comes and goes with me all the time now. And he's going to he's gonna go into a depression once we all go back to work. <laughs> yeah, I'm, we were. And he's, and dogs are so healing. Like they're so, I don't know what it is about their little spirits, but like even just laying with him, I've been in a bad mood, just laying down on the floor with him, just like cuddling with Henry because he's a big dog kind of like, it looks Lucy is, but but um, it, he's a bigger dog, and it's it's just so comforting, right? It it, it is comforting, and I, I'm I'm feeling we were talking about this just today that oh my goodness, when I go back to work, she's going to be in in depression. She's either um, going to go to depression, or they're all going to throw parties when we're gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're like get out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, do you think that there are any advantages to doing the news from home? Like, because I feel I feel like me doing the voice and, and the talk show and the recording a record, it is hard in this circumstance, but at the same time, like right now, I'm wearing just like gym pants and you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, well that's, that's, yeah, I mean, there is comfort. I put on a suit and tie and yes, I wear pants, um, but I, I felt like I hit rock bottom one day. I was doing the newscast, middle of nightly news, and I looked down and I realized, oh my goodness, I'm barefoot. And, and it, horrif it horrified me. Obviously, the audience couldn't see it, but I'm like, oh, my goodness, I, I, this is where I'm at. Oh, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I took my shoes off. I was like, well, no one can see them. But it I is. I put my shoes on for this interview now. So. I know. But you do feel like you're like, wow, there, I've really, the bar, there's no bar anymore. I've just gone so low. <laughs> there's no bar. Uh, no, it's, uh, but there's some advantages. I mean, I, I work alone, so, I mean, I had to learn how to you know, flip some switches and buttons and turn some lights on. Uh, but I have a great bathroom access, which, you know, on those yeah. big long news days is always good. So, you know. That's, I know, I'm trying to be positive about it too. It is hard though, cause I'm like you, I'm not a tech person. So I'm having to learn how to do all this stuff behind the scenes too. And you really start to go, thank you so much to my crew. I already really appreciate <laughs> my crew, but like you really appreciate your crew in this moment and, and all that they do and the little things that kind of add up. But Yeah, I was doing a newscast uh, the other night and in the, it was like 10 minutes before air and no one was talking to me through my earpiece, but I didn't think anything of it. Sometimes they're, they're busy. And then I hear the phone ring and then my wife comes running in. She goes, you're IFB, you're IFB. So somehow my communications had cut to the studio. And so then it kicked off a whole bunch of things I had to dial back in. But um, so she's my tech manager, actually. Um, That's my what my husband, my husband's been doing the same thing. And we have no idea what we're doing. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's different. Well, I see that a great base behind you. And I'm just curious, I mean, can I convince you to play just a little something maybe, or? Uh, yes, well, you know, I don't know if I have any basses nearby, but if I did. Uh, <laughs> Amazing. How about, how about blues in, uh, in B flat? I love it. Something is moving your... Your, your around. It's awesome. Oh, oh, that was my tapping foot. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it music. was like tapping with the beat, like moving. It was awesome. You might <laughs> Lester, at some point in life when we can be within six feet of each other, we got to do something together. I want to sing while you play bass. That's what I'm talking about. I would love that. I, you know, I have, um, I always play my basses, but I find it's like a, 
it's become a ritual now. Before my newscast, I, I put on some music in my little home office, and then I start jamming, and then it kind of gets me in this like headspace to do the news every night. So it's fun. Oh, Thanks for asking. Cool. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. I love I, Kyle. Like I was telling you before, my bass player is so amazing. He'll go like how you have your upright bass back there. He'll go, you know, from from different um, kind of basses, and it's just such a smooth sound. And oh, I love it. People know this, but actually, they always think it's the drummer, but it's the bass and the drums that really hold down the rhythm and everything of of, of a set of, of you yeah. Know, if you if you could pull out the bass track, you know, uh, you would realize how much a part of you. You don't you don't often hear it. Uh, consciously, but man, you take it, you remove it from the music, and, and everything changes. And, yeah, and then it's like, wait, where's the where's the beat, and where's everything? Yeah, it's it's such yeah. a cool instrument. It's so cool sounding too. It's a sexy instrument. All right, y'all. Well, you can catch Nightly News Kids Edition on NBCNews.com, the NBC News YouTube page, and also Peacock. Um, you can also catch Lester on NBC Nightly News on NBC as well. He's got a lot of jobs, y'all. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Please don't make me keep going.